الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. It's a great pleasure for me to announce the start of knee arthroscopy course in the Benha Orthopedic Online Review course. Today is the start. We will start with our beloved professor, Professor Dr. Baha Korana, Professor of Orthopedic Surgery, Al Azhar University, speaking to us about examination of the knee and will be followed with our beloved professor, Professor Dr. Khaled Matrawi, Professor of Radiology, Alexandria University, and he will speak about MRI of the injured knee. Our moderator today will be Professor Dr. Hossam El Bigawi, Professor of Orthopedic Surgery and Knee Arthroscopy, and the uh, Chairman of the uh, Knee Arthroscopy Unit in Benha University. Dr. Hossam, may you start? Dr. Hossam? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسعدنا ويشرفنا ان نبدا كورس ني سولوسكوي في بنها اونلاين كورس ويسعدنا ويشرفنا وجود اساتذه من جامعات مصر المختلفه وهنبدا ان شاء الله في الاستاذ الدكتور بهاء كورونا استاذ جراحه العظام في طب الازهر the title of the lecture is in the examination of welcome Dr. Bahá Corona. I would like to introduce Dr. Bahá Corona to start. Thank you, Dr. Hossam, and it is my great pleasure to be in this course and Olus Banha pioneer in introducing and helping the people for more teaching and learning. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed uh, Ashab, for uh, this uh, thinking and uh, uh, expanding this knowledge. Uh, my talk today it is about examination of the knee, and uh, just uh, I think welcome for everybody who is uh, listening to us. And this is our flag, Egyptian flag, and this is my pictures. And it's just uh, uh, always I ask it this: Who has a driving license, and who can drive? Always, I put this because you always driving on the road and you found a, a lot of signal and sometimes you don't know what is this signal. And uh, that is why in examination, you have a lot of signal, but if you don't looking for it, you will missing it. This is a signal mentioned for you that it is a uh, uh, that uh, there is something, the road is coming to be closed and will be open for other side. Okay, our objective from, uh, learn, uh, uh, from this talk is to learn how to do a quick and thoroughly knee examination and be able to, uh, to examine the collateral ligament, crochet, menisci, patellofemoral syndrome, osteoarthritis, osgood slaughter, patellofemoral, uh, patellar tendinosis, and uh, bisanthrus and elutibial pain. This is uh, some diseases around the knee and you have, when you are examined, you have to look for this as a differential diagnosis including elutibial band, articular cartilage, symptom, osteoarthritic, plica, and all these things. So the task uh, at the hand, how to examine a patient, it is you have to go for systemic approach. Systemic approach means that you have to go the step ladder. You have to look for the history from the injury or non-injured, and then listen and touch and think, and then obtaining an imaging study, and then interpret this uh, uh, and then we go for, for final diagnosis, correct uh, diagnosis, and then the best treatment. If you're missing one of these systemic approach, you will fade and you will not giving an, a good diagnosis and good management. So for the knee, the, com the main complaint of the knee can be categorized into four ca uh, categories like pain, swelling, instability, and deformity. And uh, each one has an, uh, many subgroup. Uh, so from the history taken, it is asked about injured or non-injured, when and how, what is the symptom and the level of the activity after and before the injury. So the mechanism of injury is very important. The position of the knee in respect to the body as a whole, as the time of injury, it is a very important point and you have to ask. This means that the limb, if, if it is fixed and the body rotates, there is a rotational uh, injury. So how to diagnose the knee complaint? Look for the history. You can classify this patient according to the patient age and the sex, and does the knee swelling after the trauma or not? 
is there is a mechanical problem after that or not. So this is a historical clue. You can just put it in your mind. If it is non-contact injury with a pop, this means maybe this is an ECL injury. If the contact injury with a pop, you have a medial collateral ligament or lateral collateral tear or meniscal or tear or fracture. Acute swelling after a trauma, this means ACL tear or PCL and other injuries. Lateral blow, uh, blow to the knee means that there is a strain on the medial, uh, medial collateral ligament. Middle blow to the knee, this is lateral collateral ligament. The knee giving out or buckle means it's ACL tear or patellar dislocation. Falling onto a flexed knee, this is a PCL tear. If we classify this and you put it in your mind according to the age and sex, this is the most common. From the age from zero to 12, this is the squid lateral meniscus, both in male and female. If it is from 12 to 18, it is also chondritis dissecans or Osgood-Schlatter in the male, but in the patient, in the female, it is the first patellar dislocation. If it is from, uh, from 18 to 30, longitudinal meniscal tear from the trauma or recurrent dislocation of the patella in the female, from 30 to 50, rheumatoid ascites and rheumatoid ascites both, and for, uh, from 40 to 50, degenerative meniscus, both male and female, 45 and above, it means also arthritic changes. Look, for, uh, ask for the swelling. This is another complaint. It's the effusion means that there is a swelling. The presence of pathology will must be investigated. And this, uh, when you aspirated, you have three things, either fluid or blood or pus. Absence of effusion does not exclude the pathological, but less likely. Long standing meniscal lesion and also arthritic. What about the mechanical problem? the history of initial injury, the mechanism of injury, you have to ask about the degree of the injury, direction and incapacitating after the injury. And you have to ask about the giving way, going down the stairs or jumping. This means this patient has an, maybe has an acute ligament. Twisting or uh, uh, walking, uneven ground, this means an escal injury. Knee locked, either through or through the locking. Never lock, uh, locked in full extension. This is the locking. Full flexion but limited extension for in body or meniscal click and pain. And you have to ask it about the character of the pain. So also have the duration of the pain. Is it less than six months or more than six weeks or more than 52, more than one year? This means the chronic degenerative. And where is the pain? The side? Is it anterior? Is it posterior? Is it medial? It is lateral and always consider a referred pain from the spine and the hip. Never examine one joint without examining the proximal and the distal joints. So the history is very important. Ask about is it traumatic or non-traumatic? Traumatic may be um, subgrouped into fracture, dislocation, muscle tendon, meniscal injury, ligament. A traumatic consider infection, the systemic disease, gouty, uh, tumors, inflammatory arthritis, referred for, for, uh, from lumbar spine and the hip and also arthritis. This is a mechanism of injury if uh, you have to put it in your mind. Prolonged flexion and hyperextension like the, the people who is working on the ground, the posterior horn of the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus OCL. Hyperextension injury and anterior tibial or uh, femoral condyle or BCL or ACL. Valgus with flexion, rotation, lateral tibial and femoral condyle. Virus injury, medial tibial and uh, or femoral condyle, lateral collateral ligament. Flexion with posterior tibial translation. This is a dashboard like in, uh, in car accident, like a BCL posterior dislocation of the knee. What is the aggravating factor? Is a meniscal pathology for long standing? It can give way and looking and resistant swelling and thickening of the synovial membrane with a pain specific in the joint line. Patellofemoral joint pain, which is uh, pain uh, on kneeling and squatting, pain on stair, and pain on sitting, and uh, you, hear, you hear about the crepitus. What other uh, aggravating factor in osteoarthritis? The way, uh, during weight bearing and changes of position, start uh, staring, kneeling, stiffness, and also ligament pathology like moving valgus or varus or may giving way. As the important questions you have to ask during the history, did the knee swelling and was it immediately? Immediate swelling indicated him arthrosis, and this is a sensitive for intra-articular structure like ACL. And was there is associated pop or click? 
Does the knee giving way, it is a pseudo giving away or true giving way? Does the knee locked again, pseudo locking or true locking? Morning stiffness is very important to excluding osteoarthritis. And the clearing, uh, clearing, uh, clearing questions that are like a very, uh, what we call the red flag is a patient has a weight loss, night pain, history of serious pathology, systemic unwilling, fever, night swelling. This uh, give you an question uh, that there is something which is more serious. So the investigation for the knee can be categorized into aspiration and the culture of the fluid, blood x-ray for the joint, so, uh, chest x-ray, MRI, manipulation under anesthesia, and uh, arthroscopy examination. So when you examine, examine for, this is the four categories for the examination. Look, inspection, feel, palpation, measurement of the joint and around, and the movement, this is a test with either dynamic or static. So for inspection, expose both lower limb, it is very important, and not the joint itself and look for the position, look for from standing, sitting position, supine position, and the prone position. And this is the knee inspection. When you examine the knee and inspect it, looking for the wasting, looking for alignment, deformity, shortening, swelling, and don't forget that you examine the joint above and joint below like uh, you have the like foot. And this is an example of uh, uh, an inspection. So sometimes the, the inspection not for the same style, but it can be affected other side like spine. For an inspection, look for um, from anterior and posterior leg. Is it symmetrical or non-symmetrical or symmetry? A swelling, bruises, scarring, rashes, deformity, wasting, and the bruises. And uh, if there is a dilated vein, it means that is it a heat, patellar position, quadriceps extensor apparatus intact or not. And this is an example of uh, symbronze purse swelling on the uh, popliteal area. Wasting is very important. Uh, looking uh, in the sides, the quadriceps wasting, and always looking for the vastus medialis wasting, very often seen after an old injury to the menisci. But it is not only a swelling, uh, wasting, it is oh, sometimes there is swelling, and this is like a, 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 a hyperlipidemia or lymphedemia, and this is, can be affecting uh, the misdiagnosis. Also, when you expect uh, looking for alignment from the genoverum, the bow legs, or genovalgum, can be predisposing to patellofemoral syndrome. And also for the center of the gravity, uh, is the center of the gravity going from the greater trochanter to the center of the knee to the uh, malleoli? But if it is the knee behind this, it means this is in a recurvator. If the knee in the front, there is an affliction deformity of the knee. And this is in a correct and the correct position related to the patella and the second, uh, web, uh, second web space. Uh, this means about the tibial torsion. Also, look for the gait. It's very important when the genoverum, the virus, my pigs, and genovalgum, which is the common position in the female. This is an example of the patient with an inflection deformity of the knee and also with uh, tibia vara and flexion, uh, both of them can be presented in one patient. And this, when you examine the knee, look for the patella position, can be subluxated like in the recurrent dislocation of the patella. And in inspection of the patella, the patella femoral syndrome, it is very important to, uh, to looking for the J sign. The J sign is a sufficient supine or, or sitting and the knee extended from, or, uh, from a flexed position, lateral deviation of the patella. And you will see this in this uh, video. And also habitual dislocation of the patient can be habitually dislocated in the knee and keeping in this position. And this is very important when you examine the patient. 
and also for looking for the patellar shape and the presence, uh, the presence of a bipartite patella, which is presented as a manifestation as protruding prominence in the superlateral aspect of the knee. This is the example of uh, the bipartite patella, and uh, this is the swelling in the superlateral uh, portion of uh, the patella. And when you palpate it now, you have to palpate it uh, starting from the joint line, and you have to know about the anatomical landmark. And this is uh, very important to you know where is the patella, where is the lateral condyle, the patellar tendon, the tuberosity, and the medial condyle. And they're looking for the swelling, where is the effusion, lateral, medial, uh, peripatellar bursitis, and the bisancer bursitis. And this is the bony landmark. It's very important to, to know and where to, uh, you are going to palpate. So when you palpate it, uh, uh, divide the knee into four zones the anterior zone, medial zone, lateral zone, and posterior zone. This will be facilitated for you to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to locate it, where is the pain and where is the manifestation and where to, to put your fingers. So when you palpate it, there is a superficial palpation, which is very important. Look for the temperature comparing to the other side. Look to the skin surface and the elasticity of the skin and check for the swelling and signs. This is what you call superficial palpation. Then go for the anterior, anterior, anterior part. Examine. You're starting by the quadriceps. It's very important if there is a defect, is a swelling or um, an abnormality. And then go for the uh, bony prominent, like a tuberosity, like in Oswald Schlatter disease. And then examine for the soft uh, uh, softening, like in prepatellar bursitis, superficial infrapatellar bursa or deep infrapatellar bursa, and you can sometimes, uh, from the anterior part, you can examine the bisancerous bursitis. <coughs> this is how to palpate it, starting with the flexion from the lower pool, then the patellar tendon, then the tuberosity. And from this area, you can find three diseases. In the inferior pool of the patella, you find what you call the Sender larsson johnson syndrome, which is an um, uh, traction of zytis about uh, the uh, lower pool of the patella. Patellar tendon sometimes uh, can be what the patellar tendromus or patellar rupture can be occurred, or patellar insertion as a tuberosity was manifested by Oswald Schlatter disease. This is an uh, example of the three areas you, uh, you, when you palpate it from the lower pool and tibial tuberosity and the patellar tendon. Also in the proximal tibia, it is very important uh, uh, traction of ozitis, which is an Oswald Schlatter disease, and it can be manifested in children, uh, uh, teenagers. And the prepatellar bursitis, the house made knee, the egg-like swelling in the anterior to the patella, it is very important, anterior to the patella, and then induce the formation can be seen on palpated on the prepatellar bursa in the chronic inflammation. And don't forget the infrapatellar bursitis, like a clergyman knee, lower regular will be of sala. When put the sala, there's a manifestation of tuberosity. So to differentiate between house, house made and between the uh, clergyman uh, man knee, this is uh, on the anterior part of the patella, and this is the anterior part of the tibial tuberosity. This is the uh, chlorine man's knee, a whole house made, and deep infrapatellar bursitis can be manifested in the anterior part uh, of the knee. Then go for the medial part of the knee. There is three structures which is very important, and the joint line, the medial joint lines, the medial collateral ligament, and the pis ulcerous bursitis. So when you examine, examine the knee for palpate the joint line in the anterior part, the palpate is the medial meniscus, anterior portion and the coronal ligament, and then go a little bit in the mid uh, the rotation of the knee. So you make a movement of the menisci. When, when the tibial internal rotates, the medial meniscus is palpated. But uh, when the tibial external rotates, the meniscus is re, 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 uh, repositioned retracted and this this is uh, uh, very important to understand this which is this is representing the McMurray test and then you go a little bit in the midline this is a, you have the pelvis is a medial collateral ligament which is composed of two ligaments the superficial part and the deep part 
the deep part is uh, composed of uh, the tibial femoral, uh, femoral mes meniscus and the meniscal tibial component. Then go a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, medially behind. You you will, you will feel that the base anserous muscle, which is the sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus muscle, and each one separated by a person in the anterior anterior uh, anteromedial part of the knee, and then you can feeling that this is swelling the person, which is base anserous bursitis. Then go for the third zone, which is the lateral, and you find that is a joint line and the lateral collateral ligament, head of the fibula and other structures. So in the chronic uh, lateral meniscal tear, a localized band of the cerebral may be occur along the lateral joint line, creating a characteristic bulge. This bulge means that there is a chronic uh, lateral meniscal tear. Don't forget to differentiate it between from the meniscal cyst, and this is the cystic-like conditions. This is an example of the meniscal, lateral meniscal cyst. And then when you examine the joint line, you examine for the lateral meniscus and the coronal ligament, and then go a little bit in, in midway, which you feel that the, the lateral collateral ligament, then Make an uh, 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 leg 1990, and you will feel that the lateral collateral ligament uh, it is accessible to palpate it by this position, and then you examine the biceps tendon, and you will feel it and, uh, and follow it until the head of the fibula. And then you examine the iliotibial tract. This is a simple test. Ask the patient to put the heel on the ground and uh, ask him to push the backward on the ground. There will be contraction of the iliotibial band and you can be palpated this. And then you go behind the head of the fibula and make uh, thinning signs for the common peroneal nerve. And then go to the, the fourth zone, the zone number four, in the posterior aspect of the knee. And you will examine the, any swelling or any abnormality in the posterior aspect of the knee, the popliteal fossa. And the popliteal fossa, you have to remember that it is have a medial border, upper lateral border, the medial semimbrosis and semitendinosis, lateral biceps femoris, and the common peroneal nerve, a medial head of the gastrocnemius, and the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. This is triangular, if there is a swelling, in it, it will be symbolonous bursitis and has a characteristic, very important. The patient, when extended the knee, it is at appear. When he flexes the knee, it will be disappear. So they differentiate it with other swelling. <coughs> the popliteal cyst, the pucker cyst, also known as a popliteal cyst, is a benign swelling of the symbolonous or more rarely some other synovial person. And uh, this is an example how to, exa uh, to, to uh, inspect it and palpate the uh, uh, symbolonous or popliteal cyst. Then we'll go for other palpation from the anterior part, examine for the joint fluids like uh, effusion. So you will do milking, which is effusion. Uh, uh, effusion is assisted by milking the fluid distally from the suprapatellar pouch, pushing down, and the fluid will be collected under the patella. And this is then a palatomen, a palatomen test. When you're pushing the fluid, the, the patella, it is raising by the fluid you're pushing down, you feel that the patella, it is like a floating. And this is an example how to examine. Palpate it another, don't forget, after the traumatic, there is an effusion. So this is being immediately, means that it is a hemoarthrosis. 
all if the structure is the joint in involved. So if you have the patient from the history has a swelling immediately post trauma, this you have to think about him as roses. And this can be from anterior cruciate or posterior cruciate ligament, ACL, BCL injury, or meniscal injury, or patellar dislocation, or intra-articular fracture, like tibial plateau fractures. And you have to differentiate it. Remember that the sole collateral ligament, medial collateral ligament, or lateral collateral ligament sprain will not causing any effusion. What about the effusion of non-traumatic effusion? We think about the osteoarthritic rheumatoid arthritis, gouty, metabolic disease, pseudogout, writer syndrome, and infection like gonorrhea and other like tumors. What about it? how to make an application for the uh, test for the patellar mobility? Then when you examine, you have three tests. You can do it, the patellar gliding, patellar tilting, and the patellar grounding test. The positive result uh, on these tests are considered with diagnosis of patellar femoral maltracking syndrome. This is a patellar glide that assesses the patellar mobility by moving the patellar displacement of more than three quarter, uh, uh, quantity suggests patellar hypermobility causing by poor medial restraint predisposing for the patellar maltracking syndrome. And this is an example how to examine and moving the patella side to side. And this is how to divide the patella into a state, uh, into four quarters. And the patella testing, the patella ground test, it can be done by positive way or active way. Positive way, the crunching sensation transmitting through the patella when you ask the patient uh, when you're moving the knee by yourself. Active by activity uh, by uh, acting, uh, asking the patient to do an affliction extension, you will feel this uh, crunch sensation on the knee. What about patellar tilting? The, it is a positive test. The lateral aspect of the patella is uh, fixed and it cannot be raised to the least horizontal position. Indicated tight lateral structure means that there is an iliotibial band predisposing to the patellar femoral maltracking syndrome. And this is an example of the patellar tilt. What about the patellar uh, uh, grinding test? This is the patient in the supine position with the knee extended. The examiner displaces the patellar inferior into the trochlear groove and asks uh, making a pressure on, on this or asks the patient to make an active uh, flexion of the quadriceps. He will feel uh, uh, a pain, which is the test for indicated the patellar femoral maltracking syndrome. This is an, uh, a test of how we can do it. The apprehension test, which is mean that uh, like in the condromanitia patella, the vision is apprehension if the examiner tries to move the patella laterally, positive after the patella like in subluxation and in severe patellofemoral femoral maltracking syndrome. What about the movement? The movement you examine as active and passive. It's very important to know the range of the movement and extension is always zero and maybe accepted hyperextension to five degrees. And the flexion is 135, but the different from person who are thin or uh, or um, big uh, uh, thigh. And the range of motion. This is a flexion 140, extension up to uh, zero or minus 10. Internal rotation from 10 to, and excellence from 10 degrees. Always comparing the other healthy knee. It is very important when you examine one part, to examine the other part. Uh, the other knee, healthy knee. The, the best way to uh, assess the range of motion is in a prone position, not in the spine position. And this is the way to examine the range of the knee motions. This is a very important and it's a simple test to, uh, to exclude if the patient has a flexion deformity or has an, uh, 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 if, if the patient can be squat 
This means that he has a full flexion. If it's not, you better check for how much is the flexion in the supine. And uh, how to uh, examine for extension, ask the patient to uh, stand on the heel. If he can stand, you, uh, this is patient has a full extension. If cannot, this means that the patient has something in uh, limitation of extension and you have to investigate it. This is the simple test. You can assess the function and the range of motion of the knee. What about the internal structure? This is the internal structure. We have the menisci and we have the um, uh, um, ACL and the BCL. This is the McMurray test. Uh, which one is the right? How to examine the knee? It is better to do when uh, 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 holding the heel or the holding in the less, uh, uh, distal end of the tibia. When you have a screwdriver, uh, driver, you have to, to hold it from the from the uh, the head, and it's very important. And this this way, it is not a correct way to examine to do an amacmori test. This is the right way to do an amacmori test to hold the limb from the heel. And uh, uh, the the sky, we have many tests: amacmori test, Simon test, and Apley test, and we'll go through it one by one. So the McMurray test holds the knee uh, with one hand, placing your finger along the joint line and flexes the knee uh, 80 to 90 degrees. And holds the foot by the sole with the other hand. And we'll see it in the demo now. Uh, I, I, I wanted to highlight that when you examine the meniscus, you examine three parts, the posterior horn, the medial substance of the menisci and the anterior horn. McMurray test examines the posterior horn and the substance, and not examine the anterior part or anterior horn of the medial meniscus. The, to, to examine the posterior horn, this is when we make a full flexion and they make an internal external rotation. This to examine the posterior horn, the medial meniscus or lateral meniscus. And then when you extend the knee, you are examining the substance, the part of the menisci. And this is how to examine the knee. You hold the heel and flex the knee to 90 degrees. And then you make a rotational. This is to examine the posterior horn and the lateral horn internal or external rotation. And then you extend the knee with the stress, uh, valgus strain, and then extend it if the patient has apprehension or a click or abnormal sound, this means a positive McMurray test. This is an, uh, how to examine uh, the patient. This is a special test uh, you know, uh, we mentioned now, and you see it in the demo about McMurray test. The uh, between valgus strain, valgus strain, rotation the leg, the leg or, or the foot uh, in, uh, externally, extend the knee if it is a pop or something uh, or apprehension uh, for the patient. This means that it is an positive McMurray test. Um, for for uh, uh, provided a virus strain and the leg internally. This is the um, uh, test of the meniscus or click felt, positive McMurray test for the lateral meniscus tear. Uh, what about the uh, um, ugly grinding test? Uh, this is a patient laying prone and flexed the, his or her knee to 90 degrees, placing your hand on the patient head a heel and pushing down to compress the meniscus between the femur and the tibia while rotating internal and external rotation, depending on the area of the pain, medial or lateral meniscus tear will be elastic. This is an example how to do an uh, upper grinding test. And this is uh, 
Dimo. What about other tests? This is an aesthetic test. Okay, we can do what we call dynamic test. Let's show the sign, the squat test. This is an aesthetic test, and it can be positive. And eagle test, uh, this is, uh, we explain that when you put the leg external or internal, an internal rotation and a patient uh, squat, this is, will be elicit the pain on the lateral uh, meniscus. And this is when external rotate, as it is, uh, ex uh, uh, the patient expresses some pain on the medial joint line. This means positive, uh, positive uh, uh, medial. Uh, 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 really test. This is the bend on the position and the rotation of the pelvis over the single uh, standing uh, heel. Uh, or the feet, and if there is external rotation of uh, external rotation of the pelvis, he will be less a pain on the lateral meniscus. And when he do an internal rotation of the pelvis with uh, with uh, rotational of the leg, this will be expresses the pain on the medial joint line. This means a positive for the medial uh, medial meniscus. What about the other structure, which is um, a stabilizing structure, like collateral ligament, medial? and the lateral collateral ligament and how to examine this. Uh, to examine this, you examine the knee in two positions. In a full extension, this means that you examine the medial structure of the knee. When you flex the knee 30 degrees, you are examining the medial collateral ligament, isolated medial collateral ligament. So it is very important when you examine the patient, examine it in full extension and in 30 degrees flexion. So if there is a pain, mild pain, uh, this means that there is a sprain. If the pain with laxity, uh, this means moderate sprain. If no fixed end point, this is a complete rupture of the lateral collateral uh, ligament ruptures. This is an, uh, a demo for that. And this is how to examine a patient. If you can, uh, if you have an, a big uh, person, you can look for the, how the direction of the uh, strain of the knee. This is the lateral collateral ligament. And this is uh, how to um, make a pressure and stabilizing the knee and then uh, and make a stress uh, test for the collateral ligament. And this is how to uh, apply a vulgus stress with the knee at, 30, uh, at zero and 30 degrees. And always have these uh, categories. Pain, it is mild sprain. Pain with laxity, it is a moderate sprain. If no fixed uh, end point, this is the complete tear uh, of the medial collateral ligament. And how uh, look for the direction of the force. The force is going in bars, uh, uh, out, outward pushing. This is mean that you are examining the medial collateral ligament. This is that uh, you are examining in full extension and in 30 degrees flexions. And he, how to examine the patient, you can stabilize the patient by putting the other leg outside the table and then examine the patient to, uh, to fix the patient and not coming with you. Uh, special tests, you have now the uh, ECL, which is the anterior drawer test. The patient spine with the knee flexes 90 degrees, stabilizes the patient foot by sitting on it, but the cup, uh, the cup your hand around the patient knee and the drawing the tibial toe. There is a specificity and, uh, uh, and sensitivity this test is sensitivity about 43%, but the specificity is 87%. And this is the translation, how to translate it, the tibia uh, over the uh, distal end of the femur. And this is uh, how to do the anterior test.
this is an, another test, the Lachman test, which is very uh, uh, has an, a very sensitivity and a high uh, specificity. And the patient supine with the knee flex 30 degree fall on the tibial tower uh, toward you, and this is a very important test. And this is uh, when you have a patient and you have a small hand, or the examiner is a, a small hand and the patient with a, a big uh, guy, you can do this by this way. This is some modification, and we'll see it in this demo. One plane, one plane, huh? This some modification for that uh, Lachman test. So this is uh, uh, how to do a Lachman test and this some modification. If you have an, uh, a big guy or you are have an, a, small in, a small hand and you cannot grasp the leg. Lachman test and the true draw test are a positive if there is an increase in the amount of the anterior tibial translation comparing with the opposite leg or there is no firm end point. This means that a complete rupture of the ACL. What about the, the pivot shift? Test is a very um, uh, specific test. This is a highly specific for detection of the ECL injury. It is very important and uh, it is sometimes it is uh, painful and uh, it is better to do it uh, during uh, anesthesia or preoperative when you are putting the patient under sedation or with anesthesia. And this is how to do an a pivot shift. And we'll see the, the, the pivot shift is it's an anterolateral instability. The lateral tibial plateau subluxated in extension, and it is reduced in flexion with by the iliotibial tract. It can be have a three grade, grade one, which is a, a, a glide into the place that uh, the, the tibia, and the grade two is a pop into the place of the tibia, and the grade three is a, doesn't reduce at all. This is the three grade of the pivot shift, and have, this is a demo for how to do a pivot shift. This is a, a, a special test for ECL, and each one has a specificity and sensitivity. But the most, the most one, which is the Lachman test, giving about 85 percent, 
and the ninth, uh, sensitivity and the 94% specificity. Uh, there is a very important uh, term, it is uh, called unhappy triad. This is mean injury of the three st structure and this is a severe injury. Uh, there is, will be a uh, medial collateral ligament, ACL uh, injury with the medial meniscus and this is called unhappy triad. What about the PCL? Now we, we examine the ACL, now we go for the PCL. It is a posterior drawer test, it is uh, opposite to the anterior drawer test. I stay in the same position as for the anterior drawer test and which is the tibial posterior. And it's very important to differentiate it between uh, uh, PCL injury and sometimes with subluxation. And this is um, very important to what we call the sex sign. And you can do it by this way. It is a very simple. Another way of this BCL is a sag sign. You're holding the, uh, the 90, 90 degrees for the knee with holding the uh, heel. There will be sagging of the tibial, tibros uh, tibial tibrosity. And this is in, uh, uh, the position of the patient. And this is uh, from the lateral side, comparing the both, the, uh, both knees. What we call the sac signs of the sac test, the good free test. And there is another modification you can do it by this, the posterior drawer test by this way, or good gravity test. But the very important is the quadriceps active drawing test. The patient uh, makes the patient in, in the flexion and then asks the patient to contract the quadriceps. The quadriceps has an abetellar tendon, and the abetellar tendon has attachment to the tibial tuberosity. This will push the tibial, tibial tuberosity and the tibia anterior. This means that uh, there is an positive uh, posterior uh, collateral ligament injuries. There is another test which can be done, like dial test, the uh, Veltri uh, DM, and posterior lateral door test, where a positive reverse pivot shift and external rotation recurvatum the uh, Hodgkin, uh, Hodgkin uh, test. As a, uh, we will speak about the dial test because it is a very important because it represents the PCL with a, a posterior lateral corner. Uh, the dial test uh, at, uh, it examines the patient in the prone position at 30 degree and at 90 degree. At 30 degree means that uh, there is difference in the rotation of the legs. This means that the, this patient has a PCL injury. At the 30 degree and the 90 degree, this patient has an, a PCL and uh, 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 BC, uh, B, uh, BCL and BL, uh, BLC and BCL. Positive more than 10 de degree asymmetry. 10 degree more than the normal leg at 30 and 90 degrees means that this is a positive test for dial test. What about the iliotibial band? The iliotibial band has attachment to the upper part uh, in the hip and in the uh, running uh, uh, to the side, to the knee, and the very important uh, stabilizing structure in the, lateral, in, in the uh, lateral part of the knee. And this is an example how to do an upper test. Elitibial pan. This is the way, uh, if you have a tight uh, band, it will be uh, 
stay in the uh, abduction. What about uh, relaxation uh, related examination? When you have a knee, don't forget to examine the hip, the spine, and the ankle and the foot. It is not only the knee. Sometimes the patient has pis planus and has external tibial torsion and sometimes affecting the knee. Also, don't, uh, don't forget to examine the isometric muscle testing and also don't forget to regional lymph nodes. Every patient in musculoskeletal, you have to examine the neurovascular. Never pass the patient without uh, examination of neurovascular. So if, remember the five Ps. Remember for the pain, pulse, pallor, paralysis, and paralysis. This is a neurovascular examination. It is very important in the knee when you examine or the lower limb, the bronean nerve, look for the, just ask the patient to make a dose flexion. This means the uh, bronea nerve intact. And if he has an, can make an, a plantar flexion of the big toe, this is the intact of the tibia nerve. This is very important to examine the neurovascular. And still some patient, uh, some people who is going to exam to forget that to examine the neurovascular in the lower limb. What about the pain? Don't forget that sometimes the pain coming from elsewhere. It's coming from the hip. We have many patients who has an aesthetic capital femoral epiphysis and complaining with the knee pain and people examine the knee and forget to examine the hip. If a knee pain can be referred from the lumbar spine, like herniating disc or from the hip and the ankle, the pathologists do not forget to, to do a gross hip and ankle examination this is a motor strength, sensibility, and deep tendon reflex, and always examine both knees. Don't forget, this is a very important slide you have to remember. Sometimes when you are examining the patient, you can make an, a dynamic examination. This is the OSCE and how to examine the patient. Uh, the, the people just, I put uh, one minute, how to present yourself to the patient. You have to introduce yourself. You prepare your hand, clean your hand because the patient know well, and then you will go looking, feeling, and uh, as we mentioned before. Sometimes you have to make an, uh, the commentary. This is what we call the instrumentation measurement for examination of the knee. This is the dial Daniel and Larry Malcolm 1994 to examine dynamically. And GNPR, this is a dynamic examination of the knee and the robot measurement and the stress radiography. This is an example of the instrumentation measurement of the knee. As the end, don't forget, you, uh, you have to add it for you, look for the uh, more uh, signs. You have to look for the more 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 في الأستاذ الدكتور محمد أشهب والجميع وكل سنة طيبين. Thank you so much, sir. شكرًا جدًا دكتور بهاء على the very interesting and uh, informative and illustrative talk. بصراحة يعني إحنا كلنا استفدنا منها فن. كل ال attendees بي الله يخلي حضرتك يا فن. كل ال attendees بي send their best wishes to you, sir. Uh, you one much. of the uh, interesting uh, in the attendees. One of our colleagues from Jakarta, Indonesia, is sending his best wishes to uh, all the panel and the speakers, especially Dr. Baha Korana. Uh, best Allah wishes Allah. to him and all uh, our colleagues in Indonesia. Thank, Thank you so much, Dr. Baha. Thank you so much, sir. يا فندم الله يخليك ربنا يكرمك شكرا انا انا مش شايف كويستشنز قدامي 
في اي كويستشنز تو بروفيسور هي المحاضره مش محتاجه كويستشنز هي ما شاء الله فيري الستريتيف فيعني انا مش شايف ان هي في حاجه تو اسك اباوت يعني الله يخليك انا هعمل سلايد شير ستوب الشير شكرا يا فندم اه اوكي يا فندم دكتور محمد ايوه السلام عليكم سلام طيب يا سلام سؤال بس يقول له اللي هو بتاع اه اوكي اتفضل هو طبعا مش سؤال هو بيقول ان هو انا ممكن استغل ال الفايل بتاع ال بتاع ال السيشن ديت وهو ده من ايفان ده حد بيسال يعني؟ اه كان في سؤال بس سؤال ما فيش حد تاني ااا آه في سؤال Good evening, Professor. Uh, I get the question of attendance. Use the name. يعني بيقول إنه هل ممكن يكون ريكورد الكلام ده و ما فيش حاجة. هو already ال ال talk هيبقى recorded وحينزل على بعد إذن أستاذنا على ال YouTube channel. فلو حضرتك آه اكسبتنج يا دكتور بهاء اه طبعا طبعا ده حاجه جميله يعني ربنا احنا في يوتيوب شانل خاصه باسم العظام يا فندم في نهايه آه. كل اسبوع بننزل كل السبيكرز اللي اتكلموا التوكس بتاعتهم في نهايه كل اسبوع بحيث لو حد ما قدرش حضرتك يسمع التوك بتاع سعادتك يرجع على اليوتيوب شانل يشوفه يا فندم لا لا ده حاجه جميله وانا يعني يعني ببقى سعيد جدا طبعا في اي حاجه من الحاجات دي شكرا جزيلا انا بحط 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 كتير قوي من محاضراتي موجوده حتى في السلايد شو ان حب حد يشوفها ويتابعها شكرا يا فندم شاكرين جدا استاذ بهاء شكرا يا فندم شكرا يا فندم نورتنا يا فندم